Hi YouTube, it's uh, Chris from 19 Stone Ninjas. I haven't updated for ages, um, been very busy with lots of bugs, um, adding lots of new features to the game. Uh, things don't look too different at the moment, but hopefully you'll see what I've done. First of all, I've, um, I've literally just finished working on uh, a new camera. I posted a, a picture to it on our Twitter account a few days ago. Um, or should I say, I've just finished with the, the basics for this camera. Um, I'll quickly show you how it, how it works. It's, it detects and flashes and does different things. For now, this, um, this Frustrum mesh here is just uh, for debugging. But I'm also considering using it as a, a kind of enhanced vision as well. Um, potentially, uh, depending on how, how it all goes. So yeah, here we go. Um, the camera moves from left to right. Uh, cameras can have multiple waypoints. They are, uh, if I bring it up here, we have a waypoint inspector and we can add new angles into here. Um, you need to do this in um, in editor mode though. It won't, it won't save the settings here and it won't, it'll probably confuse it. So yeah, um, you can have as many waypoints as you want. So we can have one that points to five different places or one that's just static and doesn't move at all. Um, also in terms of the detection, as I said before, the frustrum detects the player in the first place. Um, once you enter that frustrum, and that can be obviously changed. Um, once you've entered the frustrum, that means that the suspicious mode will activate. And once suspicious mode is activated, it then gives you a little bit of time to get out of the camera's um, view. And if you stay within the camera's line of sight after that, it will go into detection mode, um, which will set off alarms, things like that. Now, there are also obviously the rules I have mentioned before. The way that the sub the subnet networking system is set up, uh, when I say networking, I mean the in-game hacking. I don't mean multiplayer or anything like that. The uh, the in-game hacking is basically set up so all of the devices have states and they can send commands to each other. So what we do is uh, we can configure. I won't, again, I won't do it in play mode. What I can do is I can, I'll show you in a minute, but I can configure this to set an alarm off. So there's an alarm here, and. Uh, that it can set off an alarm for a couple of seconds. So I'll just show you the detection first. If I move into the frustrum, it starts detecting me. And then detects. Now, it will keep going off constantly until I break line of sight. At that point, it goes into a resetting mode and goes back to its normal normal jiggery pokery so yep there we go um that actually set the alarm off just as beforehand but i meant to show you you can run through cameras like that as well obviously there's a stealth option you can stealth around the back of a camera which i'll show you now <laughs> it's not not that interesting to be fair but there we go <laughs> just a little thing but there's obviously crawl and crouch etc as well um, and I will probably I'll probably reduce the the threshold of detection on that. Um, I'll just quickly show you the rules. So once the camera goes into detected state, let's say, so we want to set up detected. I want to. Oh no, hang on, sorry, that was the start state. Uh, we'll leave it on to start off with, and we've added a rule. Once it enters detected state, wait for let's say. Wait for three seconds and send the turn on command to alarm or one. This should now set off the horrible alarm that I've demonstrated before as well. One, two, three. There we go. And now, in order to stop that alarm I would need to hack that device however at the moment I think oh no, no it's set on it's set up right and turn the alarm off so there we go we've got a um, ignore that block there <laughs> uh, we've got a, a networking well we've got an enhanced camera now so I think that camera's almost pretty much ready to go obviously we need to enhance the look of it and maybe add a few more effects onto it etc but we'll do that at a later stage for now it works fine um, one other thing that I have been working on, if I open up 
anyone who follows me on Twitch, I, um, I stream on Twitch quite often. Anyone who follows me on Twitch will have already seen this because I spent about two weeks banging my head against the wall trying to get it working properly. Hopefully nothing's broken at the moment and it should just work. But let's have a look. So what I've done is I've set up a air elevator. It takes a little bit longer to load this level. Um, not there. I'll tell you what I am going to do. That's another thing I've done is I've implemented a developer console, which has a number of number of commands set up in it at the moment. If you ever get a build of the game, then um, you just go into the developer console with the tilt, well, the console key, you know, it's classic Quake console key, um, which is the back quote on my English keyboard, but I think it's the tilde quote, uh, to the tilde mark on other people's keyboards, on some European keyboards. Um, very briefly, before I show you the elevator, I'll just quickly show you a light. <laughs> Dead simple, but that's a network light, so we can now turn lights on and off um, as the game plays. That's going to obviously play a part in the stealth. As we, um, uh, as you go into a room, you might want to turn the lights off and uh, it will reduce your visibility. A bit like the new Thief game. Um, I think many other games do that kind of thing, but We'll see. We'll see how uh, how that pans out. So yeah, um, elevators have obviously an elevator block. There's a door inside it. You can actually see it clipping through the side at the moment. Uh, there's also a control panel inside it and a control panel on the outside. Doors on the outside at the moment, this one can't be opened, but I might configure them to be hackable so you can open them anyway. Um, but I can, I've got a number of commands with them at the moment. So first of all, call to this floor. If I just come around here, you can see it moving. It's worth noting as well, you can ride on top of elevators as well as inside elevators. So now this, this synchronizes both the doors. Now, at the moment, there's a bug with the doors. Um, I'm going to fix that soon, actually. But it's uh, if you open the inside door while the elevator's moving, it uses world space and it kind of ends up up here somewhere. Um, it's easy enough to fix. I just need to get around to it. So yeah, and the internal control panel is similar to the external one. It controls the um, the elevator, obviously. I can't call to this floor. It'll just tell me off for that. Turn the elevator off. Turn it on. And I can move it to different floors, so I'll go to the ground floor to start off with. Now, one thing here as well is I can access this again and turn off the elevator. So I'm now suspended. If I just quickly get the scene view up again now suspended between floors now this mechanic is obviously it's part of the, the hacking interface but this mechanic is going to be used so you can access like secret tunnels etc to get through um, you can also open the door when you're in here um, if I leave that that should close again when I tell it turn it on and it's now going to resume now I didn't tell it to, to move to a floor it just resumed straight afterwards so it's acting like a a normal elevator should. Now one of the bugs that I had was um, floor 78 is just like floor 3 at the moment but I'll take you up there. One of the bugs I had was that when you were going up in the elevator it would kill you. Um, I'm sure people in Unity have had that before but it, it was driving me up the wall and all it was was a script order. Uh, the, the order that the scripts needed to run in was wrong. Um, so yeah here we go. Um, so there's a bit of a clipping going on there at the moment but I can now do that. So we have, uh, I've added some ladders in as well. You haven't seen these since last time. In fact, since the last video, you probably haven't seen this level at all. Uh, it's been a, it's been a month or and a bit since I did it. Um, I've actually been working with our modelers, um, our environment artists, and our prop guys to get various bits done. This is the first room that's gonna um, that's gonna be created, and this is the con the blue concept art that you might have seen on the website. Um, Obviously, there's no uh, the, the concept art actually from this angle here. Obviously, you can see it a bit better if we open it up a bit. So it's it's from there. So there's also there's a there's a glass window going all the way to there and back to here. Um, and there's lots of terminals around here, etc. Uh, I'm not sure if I did show any of this level. I can't remember what I should really have looked at the last video before I uh, I posted, but. We've now got lots of um, lots of vents. There's probably some occlusion errors with this at the moment as well, as you can see there. I've got the, the gap distance set too low at the moment, but not to worry about that. Let's 
just get us through here for now. It's a bit slow going through vents, but I've tried to speed it up as much as realistically possible. Won't bother going down there, but... So there'll be four elevators here, um, just for aesthetics, really. There's also vents at the bottom of the elevator shafts, um, so you can get in and out. I'll just take you around the rest of this level. So this is going to be a, a computer development office. You know what, I bet I can't take you through the rest of this level. No, I can't. One second, I have to open this door manually. Where is it? Here we go. Or allow it to be opened, rather. Should. There we go. Now be able to get in there. Yeah, occlusion issues at the moment. I mean, I said I was in the middle of um, doing some mesh work. I'll do for now. Um, we've got a balcony area. There's going to be a whole street. Um, probably going to be um, all fake buildings. For now, at least, anyway. And we've got a canteen area with a big TV. And vending machines. Anyone who played Deus Ex will have seen this before. You have to move them to get into vents. I'm not going to take you in there at the moment, but there will be. A, there's a tactical reason for for all of these vents. Uh, again, that's supposed to be a vent, but the occlusion column's broken. And uh, we've got a couple of toilets. Fire exit. And the fire exit. On each floor, there will be. And uh, stationary cupboard. So there's a bit of a bug with the. Um, the ledge grabbing at the moment, you clip through the ceiling a bit, but that's into another vent there. And we've got a security office, this is going to be where you can control a lot of the cameras. There's going to be cameras up here, cameras up here, there's, there's quite a lot of uh, design works went into this, but for now it's, it is what it is. Um, I'll just save a bit of time. I'll show you the ground floor. See the elevator coming from the top. Yeah, we've seen that before, though. Uh, this is another security office. This is probably going to have uh, a few dividers, etc., in it. A staircase I crudely made just for uh, just so I can actually get up here for the time being. These are all just going to be offices. Um, so there's a fire exit down here again, and it's just going to be an area up here you can run around on. Lobby with lots of desks. This uh, the concept art for this area is currently getting made as as I speak. We've got a centerpiece, which is going to be a nice big shiny logo, hopefully, and a few other little rooms and stuff. I mean, this is very very plain at the moment, but we're we're going to have a lot more stuff in here. So there's multiple ways to get up. Obviously, there's the elevators. There's the um, uh, this is the uh, they might make something out of the. No, I'm still a bug with that. Yeah, unfortunately, there's a bug with the ladder uh, dismounting at the moment. Um, it's worth noting as well, every single door, every single terminal, every single vent, um, all the elevators, they're all going to be hackable. Um, and the hacking, the hacking interface is something else that I've been working on. So I'm going to briefly show you the hacking interface. It is very much a work in progress. Um, I've had a few questions, people asking me if the hacking interface is going to allow commanding, you know, um, typing. That was the original plan. Uh, however, what I've done at the moment is I've created a UI for it, but it's a nice 3D UI. And obviously it will have a lot of effects and look very nice. But the, the nice thing about this is... I'll just re-enable it. The nice thing about this hacking interface is that... It's dynamic and it's built from all the devices that are already created in the level. So this is all all code that's uh, generated this. So I'll show you on a do. I'll show you on a door for now. No, I'll show you. Yeah, I'll show you on a door for now. Um, probably not the best level to show you on. Actually, <laughs> sorry, a bit disorganised. 
Right, so we've got the we've got the hacking one again. This has got a better network set up at the moment. This because this uh, office level is a work in progress. It's it's not very uh, friendly for this UI. Right, so if I go to this, um, I've enabled this other UI, and here we go. So we're now in cyberspace uh, essentially. And I've spent a long time getting the mouse uh, movements. So we've got a scroll in, scroll out, left click, scrolls in and scrolls out. And we've also got rotate around as well. Now, at the moment, that this doesn't work. Uh, there's nothing else going on. Um, this is it. But as you can see, the other devices are all generated. So these lines are devices that this one, con this one connects to. Each one of these will you have to hack them manually and the further away you get from the source device which is this terminal that I'm at the harder it will be so um, there may be a uh, another network that it connects to uh, there's none, no examples here at the moment but there may be another network that it connects to that you can hack so you'll be able to you'll be able to click on each one of these it will take you over to them and then you'll be able to hack into them and then access commands and uh, re reroute rules etc um, now I'll just quickly show you the dynamicness of the of this interface. I don't know if you can tell, but that is a different configuration. It's all random. And when we when I start setting some actual real networks up, it'll really start coming together as a, a tactical interface. I'm also going to have an option for a command input here as well. Probably not sure if I'll do that for the demo. Not sure if I'll do that for um, for anything uh, any, anything in an immediate release but it's at least there um apart from that it's been bug fixing um this has already been 20 minutes of video so i will i will finish it there um if any of you are in you know if you haven't if you don't know anything about the game go to our website which is 19 stone ninjas.com or um follow us on twitter which is 19 ninjas and we're also obviously on YouTube, which you're probably seeing this on anyway. And um, we've got a Facebook page as well. Um, if you just look up 19 Ninjas on Facebook, we'll be there. So yeah, um, thanks for thanks for following.